Welcome back to Motors and Medicine. On today's episode, I'm going to be doing the part three install of another performance part for this Bronco before we take it on a nice long trip. Now, as you guys have seen in prior videos, in the first video, I showed you guys the install of the engine uh, cold air intake system, which was really amazing. It gives it great induction sounds and it helped. It picked up about 20, 25 horsepower with that alone. Then part two was installing the race chip programmer, which added another 25 horsepower or so and about 30 pound feet of torque. And that gave it another kick in the pants. Good, improved even more throttle response. Now, uh, part three of this uh, power pack install, if you will, is going to be um, an upgraded intercooler. Now, anybody who has one of these Broncos knows that these stock intercoolers are a little bit um, lackluster in their ability to stave uh, heat soak. So in essence, the intent here is to try to improve uh, heat transfer, get rid of any heat soak that might be a problem, and then uh, go from there. So this is what the intercooler looks like. And it's considerably larger. I'm gonna show you guys a comparison when I take the old one off compare the two and uh, basically what I need to do is remove the front bumper, two nuts that are holding on the little uh, louvers that sit in front of the stock intercooler and then um, just basically do the install. It's a really quick install. There's only two pipes to install so it should be really quick and easy but uh, what I'm going to do now is just remove a couple things and then show the comparison and then we'll pick up from there. Okay so I realized I didn't actually have to take the bumper off completely. Um, what I needed to access, so you can see the bumper's just kind of flopping here. What I needed to access was this little nut right here. Hopefully you guys can see it. It's right here. That little nut there and this nut right here. And those two nuts are the ones that hold the louver mechanism in place. The louver mechanism is not going to get reused, so we're gonna remove those nuts and take the louver mechanism down and then take the intercooler down once I remove this bottom uh, skid plate. So we'll go to that point. Okay, so now I took the louver thing out. That's this right here. This is the louver motor, which is no longer gonna be needed in this. Now you guys can see, here's the bumper hanging down right here. Here's the stock intercooler. So now I need to remove two more supporting brackets and the intercooler just comes down once I disconnect the hoses. And after I do that, then we'll just install the new intercooler in its place. And uh, they supply a new bracket that goes here in front and uh, we should be done. So we'll go to that point. Okay, so now I got the intercooler off. I'm gonna show you guys here what it looks like without the intercooler. Here's one side, here's the other. So this is the side that leads to the uh, intake, or rather the throttle body. This is the side that comes from the turbos after it's been pressurized. So it hits here, cools off, and then it goes back up here into the engine. Anyway, um, this is the, the difference in intercooler size right here. So you guys can see the difference in thickness. This is about three inches thick right here. This is like nearly five inches thick. So if you guys can hopefully see that, illustration okay now I'm going to kind of lay it like this on its front so you can kind of see the difference this one is actually wider than this one so not only is this one wider this way but it's also much thicker this way so hopefully you can see that difference there so now the only thing you have to sacrifice is not having this louver mechanism which doesn't really have much of a purpose I'm not sure why they even put it on here um, but we're going to install this guy on and uh, get everything hooked back up and hopefully reverse order. We can just put it back together and it'll look really good. And uh, we'll go from there. So that's the next step. I'll uh, move up to that point. So here we go. Okay, guys. So I'm under the, the Bronco now. And uh, as you can see, this is the intercooler tube now hooked up to the intercooler. The intercooler is right here. It's installed. 
brackets are holding it in place. The clip is back on here. The clip is back on right here. So now this bracket's installed. Now I just need to put the bumper back on and we're back in business. So go to that point. Okay guys, so now it's everything's fully installed again. I'm gonna give you guys a quick view there. You can see armor's back installed. Now you can see how open this is here. There's no more louver system here. Now, again, I don't know why Ford put those louvers there. I imagine it's because they're meant to, in the winter time, close so that, um, I guess you, you can bring more heat in. I'm just not positive why they work the way they do. Um, but either way, there are louvers on the top portion, which those make sense to me because if you're trying to warm your engine uh, faster in a cold temperature, right? Then they'll close. So like in the winter time, these ones make sense for the radiator, but why they would have the louvers down here for the intercooler doesn't make any sense because the intercooler gets overwhelmed really easy. One thing I noticed when I first got this Bronco, even before I modified it, after driving for about maybe an hour, the front mount intercooler would get heat soaked. As soon as it got heat soaked, you would notice a very profound loss in power and acceleration. And you'd have to drive it for a little while to let it cool down without getting into the boost a whole lot, and then it would pick power back up. So what this intercooler is supposed to do, according to uh, CV fabrication. That's where I got this intercooler from. Um, so the, the website is cvfab.com. Um, but anyway, CV fab claims that this intercooler is going to increase power by about 25 horsepower, but more importantly, it's going to decrease IATs by as much as 30 degrees, and it will allow for multiple boost runs without getting heat soaked. So I'm going to test that theory and find out how well it runs. Um, and I thought, what better time to install this than right before I go on my trip so that, because we're going to be doing a lot of canyons and over mountains and such, so I want to make sure that it's operating as it reports it should. Um, so, anyway, I just wanted to give you guys one last view there of how it looks, how the intercooler looks. It looks pretty clean. Um, but, you know, if you guys appreciate uh, the content, please give it a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed, please do so. It will help the channel grow. And uh, like always, I appreciate all your support. And until next time, this is Motors and Medicine signing off. Thanks. Have a good day.